Okay, welcome back to the Algebra 2 final exam review. In this video, we're going to cover uh, section 17, and that's verifying whether two given functions are inverses. So let's look at number 241. Well, before we start with that, actually, we got to know how, how do we verify whether two functions are inverses? So there's an algebraic way that we can do that. And if we recall from our last video where we have f composed with g of x, and this meant that we plug in g of x into f of x like this. Um, so there's a, f a special property of inverse functions. We normally in denote inverse functions like this. So if we have f of x, then the inverse function of f, which we call inverse of f of x, is denoted with this f, it looks like to the power of negative 1, uh, but it is not an exponent. Um, this is just poor mathematical notation uh, from really a lot of recycled notations throughout mathematics. It basically stems from this idea of functions canceling each other out. Uh, and it comes from kind of the similar idea of we have x times x to the negative first, that this is equal to 1, so they're inverses of one another. Well, functions have a pretty similar property, that if you compose the a function with its inverse, that they cancel each other out, and you get just x. So similar idea to this with this cancellation, uh, but this little negative one, which in terms of multiplication means the you know one over x. Um, for functions, it's kind of a similar thing. This this is just a reciprocal, but x times inverse of x is negative is equal to one. Well, f composed with inverse of f of x is equal to x. However, it should be noted that this is not equal to 1 over, oops, not that. Inverse of f of x is not equal to 1 over f of x. So make this very clear. They are not equal to one another. Uh, it's just a notation, and for now, uh, that's really all you need to know about this. But this is the property that we're going to use, at least for the first example. The rest of them, I'll show you how to do this with your calculator without having to actually do any algebra. That's going to be kind of nice, right? So first, let's do one algebraically for 241. We have f of x is equal to negative 1 plus 3 over 2 times x. And we have that g of x is equal to negative 1 plus 1 half x. And we want to verify, are these inverse functions or not? And so if they are inverse functions, then we should get that f composed with g of x is equal to x. So if we can simplify, or we, if we can compute this and by you know, composing them, and they're equal to x, then they are inverse functions. So let's find out. So if we do f of g of x, that means that we're going to plug in g inside of x. Well, g of x, we know is all of this over here. So this means f of negative 1 plus 1 half x. Well, now we want to replace x in f, so just this x, with all of this right here. Well, this is equal to negative 1 plus 3 over 2. So instead of writing an x here, we're going to write negative 1 plus 1 half x.
And when we do that, when we simplify this, this is negative 1 plus 3 over 2 times negative 1 is just going to be minus 3 over 2. And 3 over 2 times 1 half x is going to be, uh, to recap how to multiply fractions, we do 3 over 2 times 1 half x. This is just equal to 3 times 1, which is 3, times, or sorry, over 2 times 2, which is 4, and then we can put this x still on the outside like that. So this is plus 3 over 4 x. And we should see that if we combine negative 1 and negative uh, 3 over 2, this is not going to cancel out. And we don't even have anything else to combine our x's with. And hopefully that's clear that this is not equal to x. So all of this will not simplify to x. And so we can say, no, they are not inverse functions. And so how can we, how can we figure out whether we have inverse functions or not by instead using our calculator? So getting out our calculators, if we go to our graphing uh, part. So if we go to y equals and we type in our functions, we have negative 1 plus 3 divided by 2. Oop, not mode. X. And then we have negative 1 plus 1 divided by 2. X. I definitely hit a 7. That's supposed to be a 1. Okay. Inverse functions have this property that if you graph them, they will make a reflection over this line, this diagonal line, y equals x. So, for example, if you have some function that looks like this. Its inverse function will look like this. They'll make a mirror image of one another. So, Inverse functions have this very special property. They make this reflection over the line y equals x. And so in your graphing calculators, what you want to do is you graph them. For the third function here, just put x. That way we can see that line. And also something to observe here is that inverse functions, they always meet along that line right there. So anytime they intersect, it's along this line. So, if we graph this, we have these two lines, that was our two functions, and look at that. They don't intersect along this line, and they don't make a mirror image. It may be easier if we rotate this like that. Also, make sure you are in, I recommend going to zoom and scrolling down to zoom standard. And that'll make your graph. But notice that this line is diagonal. Um, I mean, it is diagonal over here as well. But this is it's pretty slanted here. And that's because your spacing here on your y-axis isn't the same as it is on the x-axis. So you can fix that by going to zoom and going to zoom square. And now the spacing on your x and y-axis are is the same. And so now this line is still slanted, but it's at a 45 degree angle. And so it's a, it's a more accurate graph than zoom standard. But to recap, it helps 
if you rotate this 45 degrees and make this line vertical. And then you can clearly see that this blue function and this red function are not reflected across that line. So, and they don't even meet uh, along that black line here. So because they meet over here, we know that these functions are not inverses. So now let's see what we can do with number 242. So, need more paper. So, for number 242, we have that g of x is equal to 4 over 5x plus 12 over 5. We have that f of x is equal to negative 3 plus. 5 over 4 x. So if these functions are inverses, we should be able to compose them and they'll be equal to x. So the previous example was one where they were not. I can tell you right now this one is where they are inverses. And so I want to demonstrate that to you algebraically, and the rest of them we'll just do with our calculator. So if they are inverses, we should be able to compose these functions and they'll be equal to x. So let's see if that works. So g of f of x means that we put f inside of g like that. And then we take f of x and what is f of x? We have negative 3 plus 5 over 4x. So g of negative 3 plus 5 over 4x. Now, everywhere we see an x inside of g, we're going to replace it with all of this. Well, g is 4 over 5. And instead of x, we're going to put negative 3 plus 5 over 4 x, and then plus 12 over 5. So let's simplify this. Well, we have 4 over 5 times 3. So 4 times 3, or 4 times negative 3, is negative 12 over 5. And then we have 4 over 5 times 5 over 4. Well, 4 times 5 is 20, and 5 times 4 is 20. So we have 20 over 20x. But 20 over 20x is just 1. So it's just an x. And then we have plus 12 over 5. Well. We have negative 12 over 5 plus 12 over 5. Those cancel, and all we're left with was just this 1x here. So this is equal to x. And we see that if they are inverse functions, then when we compose them, they should be equal to x. And so that's what we see here. And so now let's see what that looks like when we graph it. So we can clear this, clear out your first two functions here, but leave this one in here. That way you have your, your reflection line. We'll do 4 over 5 times x plus 12 divided by 5. And then we have negative 3 plus 5 divided by 4x. So when we graph this, we have one line, we have the other, and there we go. So we can see that these make a mirror image over this black line. And even if we zoom out, so zoom, maybe just scroll to zoom out and hit enter, enter.
and that makes it a little bit more clear. Notice they intersect right there along that black line. And so we can see that, yes, these are inverse functions. So that's the way that we can verify this with our calculator. And if we want to fix our zoom window, we can go just zoom in, enter, enter on the same spot. And because we didn't change the place that we zoomed out from, uh, it just goes back to the original window that we were using. But now let's look at number 243. So for the remainder of these, I'll do it um, just with our calculator. So for 243, we have that g of x is equal to the fifth root of x plus 1 minus 2. And we have that f of x is equal to 2 times x plus 1 cubed. So we'll do this with our calculator. Clear this and clear that. First, let's type in the fifth root of x plus 1. So we go to math and scroll down all the way to the fifth option. Because notice that the index here is just an x. So what you get to do is type in whatever index you want. So we want 5 here. And we have x plus 1. Scroll out from under the root. And then we have minus 2. The other function that we have here is 2 times x plus 1 and then cubed. So we hit the caret symbol right here. That lets us put an exponent, put a 3, and then we can graph this. We have our other function here, the third one being x. That way we can see our reflection line. And let's see what we have. We have one function, we have another, and no, these are not a mirror image of one another. And so we say that this is no, they are not inverse functions. And to be clear, for number 243, this was a yes. We showed that algebraically where we composed them and we got an x out of it. And we showed it graphically, where they did make a mirror image of one another. Let's look at number 244. Number 244, we have f of x is equal to 2 times x minus 3 cubed. And we have g of x is equal to 6 plus the cube root of 4x all over 2. So let's clear out our first two functions here and let's type these in. We have 2 times x minus 3, close parentheses, and we're going to cube that. For our second function, we need to be very careful with how we type this in. So when you type this in, you need to put the entire numerator in parentheses. So if you write this out in your calculator, it needs to look like this. 6 plus cube root 4x, close parentheses, divided by 2. The reason for that is that your calculator interprets this as that. However, this is not equal to 6 plus cube root of 4x divided by 2. If you don't have the parentheses there, what your calculator does is it also uses order of operations and it says, okay, we have 6 and we want to add these two things together. So plus cube root of 4x divided by 2. So it just divides this with that, but it doesn't divide the 6 as well, like we would if we put parentheses around it. 
When you put parentheses around it, it says that all of this has to be divided by 2, which is what we want. So we have to be careful with that. But some calculators, some of you, have this option where you can hit alpha and yeah, you can hit alpha and you'll get this fraction bar here if you hit X. So if we do that, we have alpha X and it has a built-in fraction bar for you. Now, because all of you don't have a calculator that does that, uh, for the for those of you that do have this, feel free to type in your fraction as you see it. It's a little more intuitive. It would look like this. 6 plus math cube root 4x and then divided by 2. And you can you can graph that and that will work fine. However, for the students that don't have a calculator that has this function, I'm going to clear this and I'm going to type it in as if we don't have this. Uh, have a way to do that. So what we can do is we do open parentheses 6 plus math cube root 4x scroll from under the root symbol close parentheses and then divided by 2. And when we do that let's see what we get. And that looks pretty good to me. So we can see that the red and blue functions here make a mirror image over y equals x. And so we can say that, yes, these are inverse functions. So let's look at 245. So we haven't worked much with rational functions like this, but we don't need to know much about them to know how or know if they are inverses or not. So we have g of n is equal to all of this, f of n is equal to 2 over negative n plus 3 plus 1, and we could compose them to check, but for this exam if you use just your calculator, that's fine. But we got to know how to do that. So let's clear out these two functions. And when we're typing this out, so I'll write it out first. So we have negative 3. So negative 3. But we're dividing by n minus 2. We have to put n minus 2 in parentheses uh, so that we know that negative 3 has to be divided by all of that. Uh, for similar reasons, up here, if we don't put the parentheses, your calculator misinterprets what you mean. But we have negative 3 divided by n minus 2 in parentheses and then minus 2 for that out there. Without your parentheses, you will get something different. For the other function here, we have 2 divided by, in parentheses, negative n plus 3, and then plus 1. So now let's graph that. So for our first function, we have negative 3 divided by, open parentheses, since we can't put n, we can put x. Your calculator can only interpret x as a variable. But we have x minus 2 and then minus 2, like that. So same thing we had over here, just with our variable swapped for x. And then over here we have 2 divided by negative x plus 3, close parentheses, plus 1. We graph this, it looks kind of wild. However, it's definitely not inverse functions of one another. And so we say that this is, no.
The last type we have here, probably fit it on the bottom of the page since I'm just writing out the problem. For number 246, we have that f of x is equal to 2 over x plus 1 minus 2. And we have that g of x is equal to 2 over negative x minus 1 minus 2. So to recap, we have to write that as 2 d divided by, let me just rewrite that to make it neater. We have to write that as 2 divided by x plus 1 minus 2 in our calculator. In this one we have to rewrite as 2, same thing, put parentheses, 2 divided by negative x minus 1 minus 2. Putting that into our calculator, we have 2 divided by x plus 1 minus 2. Oops, I'll put that in the second one. It doesn't matter. So for the other one, we have 2 divided by negative x minus 1 and then minus 2. So we graph this. And no, it's close. Looks like it could be, but no. So this is not an inverse function as well. So to recap, inverse functions reflect over, uh, where'd I put that? Inverse functions reflect over this line y equals x. If you're graphing two functions and they don't reflect over that line, then they're not inverses. And so you can confidently say no. If they do reflect, then they are inverse functions. And you can say yes. So that's all I have for you in this video. And thank you for watching.